best podcast in Long Beach, California. This is Tacos and Workouts. What it is, what it is. Podcast. Hello and welcome to Fernando's Comedy Hour here. We got a special uh, special guest today. We got Guam Felix, comedian from San Diego, yep, California, right? Alongside we got my co-host Chase Espejo, yep. and we got another special guest, JR Little Hater. <laughs> Little Hater. <laughs> Little Hater, yeah, and he's like here it. today. We're here today, so we're going to interview. Uh, we moved uh, we moved studios. Or we're, we're in Hollywood today. We're at the Sunset Studios here at Deaf Noodles Comedy Club. Comedy, uh... Podcast Studios too, so this is our first time here. So we'd like to welcome uh, Guam Felix. Hey Guam, how you doing? Doing good. Thanks for having me. All right, thanks for being here, man. Thanks for making it. Yeah. This is our first uh, our first show here in Hollywood, actually. So it'd be pretty cool. Yeah. So you're the first one. It's the first time. Thank you, man. Thank yeah. you. How's it feel to be the first one? <sighs> Love it, man. Hopefully we kick this thing off. Yeah, we will. It's great. So uh, you've been doing comedy now for how many years? Uh, probably on and off for about 25 years. 25 years, yeah. yeah. The, the first time, I, when I first met you, I, I like to remember people, was at Mel's Diner. Yep. Yeah, it was about a couple years ago. I was at an open mic, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was pretty cool. It was the first time I heard you, uh, you uh, I heard your set. Then I met you, then I ran into you at the at the comedy store. Yep. Found out you worked there, right? And you are mm -hmm. like, oh, I was like, that's fucking cool, man. That's pretty yeah. Awesome. Well, now we're here. So I get to see you once in a while, you know, but now we're here interviewing each other, so. Yeah. Yeah. So what's going on? So you're from San Diego originally? Yeah, I started doing stand-up comedy actually at the La Jolla Comedy Store. Uh -huh. And um, I ended up becoming a door guy there. And then I worked there on and off for about six years. And then I moved up to L.A. And then I was running a Hoodra show with uh, Jimmy O. Yang and T. Money and some other guys. And uh, Ari Manis and stuff. And then uh, they shut that show down. And then I ended up working uh, at the Hollywood Comedy Store, and I've been there almost eight years. Long time, eight years. Yeah. Right? You're, you're a regular there. Yeah, it went, it went by really quick. Yeah. Yeah. They, once, they, once the years go by, right, it's like it's over. Right? You can't oh, really... yeah. Once you start working like five, six nights a week, it just you just lose track of time. Yeah. You pretty... know, it's like we have our New Year's show. The next you know, it's like July 4th. And the <laughs> next you know, it's Halloween. And then, you know, New Year's Eve again. So right. it goes by really quick. Yeah, it just becomes yeah. like a normal thing, huh? Yeah. But I mean, is it is it normal at the store? No, is, is every day like there's different. there's always there's always I mean the crazy thing about the Hollywood Comedy Store is that there's always something new that's going to happen that night. So uh -huh. um, you never know who's going to pop in. We always have a bunch of celebrities and like famous athletes are always coming up in there. We get rappers. I mean, just like maybe like two months ago, like Rihanna was there. Um, Little Wayne came by. You know what I'm saying? You just yeah, never yeah. know who's wow. going to be there. Yeah. And um, so, you know, but you get used to it. You know, when I first started working there, I was like, oh, shit. Like, I couldn't believe, like, these really famous people were coming in there. But after a while, you see them so much, it's like, it's not even a big deal anymore. Right, because most of them live around here, right? Because oh, yeah. They have to live around here because, you know, everything, yeah. all the work is over here, right? Yeah. And I think I think the, the main reason why they love to come to the Hollywood Comedy Store is because we just kind of, like, leave them alone. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Put them in a booth, let them have a good time with their friends or their families or whoever they're with, yeah. and then, you know, and then then if they want to hang out, they can hang out. That's why, I, I mean, I love the comedy show because it's so relaxed. It's oh, chill. Yeah. Yeah. You go there, you know, you tell them you're a comic, they let you in. Yeah. You get to chill out and, you know, you know just as long as you're not bothering people. Oh, yeah. I think you're yeah. good. But, uh, yeah, that's a cool thing. I, 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 that's what I love about it because it's different. You know, it's like well, there's one, you go there and it's like you can be... You just be relaxed and be. Oh yeah, yourself, we, we that out. that basically is the hangout. I always tell the comics because a lot of times I work the patio, so I try to tell like the new comics, hey, you know the rule is that if we do have room in the back, we'll let you guys hang out and watch. Right. But the problem is, is that most of the shows have been sold out, so there's just no room for any comics even to hang out. Right. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, so. you gotta you know you gotta paying people come first. This oh, is how yeah. it is. Yeah. yeah. But I mean that, that's one of the cool things, and uh, you know as soon as it gets like later. Like, you know, uh, during the night when it hits like 1130, whatever, that's like the spot that the comics always go to just to hang out, you know. Really? So that's why the patio sometimes is packed. Like even like last night I was there and, you know, it's like 1230 and the patio's packed. 
just with you know some customers, but mostly comics hanging out, you know, uh-huh. talking shop. You know, it's, that's like a really good place to like network and you know, you know, meet other comics to do other shows. Yeah, so uh, let me ask you: before the pandemic, you know, they used to have you know the open mic on, on the uh, potluck on Mondays. Yeah. So we would have like a line of comedians come in. To, oh yeah, we had the the Kill Tony. Uh, yeah. Podcast. So, what's I mean from there to now? What's is, is there? Oh, it, it's it's calmed down. What do you think? Is, is it better because, or worse? Well, it's actually better for for the workers because every Monday, be, this is before the pandemic, so there'll be at least maybe a hundred to one hundred twenty comics showing up just to sign up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I remember. And then they were trying to sign up for Kill Tony. Right. So Kill, Kill Tony would be sold out. And then there still would be 50, 60 comics trying to get on there if they didn't get on the, the potluck. Yeah, it was, I remember it was, it so, was a yeah. chaos. Yeah, I remember. It yeah. was a, I, I, I heard on the, the Kill Tony show now that they have in Texas, they said that the, it's so bad with all the comedians hanging out uh, in the alley uh-huh. that they do. They, they they have like a separate show, like just set up impromptu, like in the alley. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. A lot I mean, of people are flocking to uh, to to Texas, right? To Austin. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. they have a right now. They have a really good scene out there. I used to live in Colleen a long time ago, so I have experience with doing shows in Texas and in Austin and stuff. But basically, it's like half the staff from like the Hollywood Comedy Store. Uh, they're like working at the Mothership now. Oh, really? So, with uh, yeah, Joe Rogan, right? Yeah. So Joe took like half the staff, half the comics. You know what I'm saying? Some of the old door guys. That are we're here in Hollywood. Uh-huh. They're like they're the comedians over there now. Oh, so, so it's you know a, it's like takeover. Yeah, and the mothership. That's the hottest club in, in right now because yeah. you know it's it's new. You know Joe Rogan gets all the best comics to stop by and do shows there. Yeah. You know, and it's basically they're like they're like the Texas version of us, right? And he's got the money. Yeah, of course. Yeah. he's got yeah. the money to do it right now. Yeah, but. Who doesn't want to do Joe's Club? Think yeah. about it. If somebody if somebody's Fuck doing yeah. a show in like do if somebody's doing a show in Dallas or San Antonio or something, they'll right. be like, "Hey, look, I'm going to fly up to Austin. Let me go do a set at the Mothership." You know right. what I'm saying? And then mm. they're basically doing the same thing that we're doing here. We're just the lineups it's, get crazy. It's just basically the, the comedy store in yeah. Austin. Yeah, yeah, basically. It's kind of funny because yeah. then you look at some of the comics that aren't doing the Mothership, and you're like, and then because you know Joe runs a the the the, the, the a Mothership that. <laughs> It might be some kind of personal issue. Oh yeah, comedians. Yeah. So I mean, the 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 one thing that I try to the best advice I try to give to comics is that you got to remember that you're kind of marketing yourself. Mm. Like you could be a, a hilarious comedian and you kill all the time uh-huh. on stage, but if you're an asshole, nobody's going to want to work with you. Right. Nobody's going to want to go on the road with you or, yeah. or fucking even be, have you around the club. You yeah. Know what fuck I'm that guy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So so can I ask you, having having working at the uh, comedy store, like, is there any particular comedians or people that you've run into a handful of times that have a uh, I think you know, no I think the the comics all the comics that are pretty much like famous and have already made yeah. it they're like still very professional and yeah. they're very they're really nice to the staff and everybody yeah. I think we get more of the uh, the uh, bitter comics that haven't figured out why they haven't made it. Uh, but yeah, you know what I'm okay, saying? yeah that, oh dude, yeah. listen, I get a lot of comics. I've been doing this 14 years. Why not? Yeah. I was like, bro, yeah. if you're gonna be bitter, just fuck, get the fuck out. Yeah. yeah, like I said, because it's like anything. It doesn't matter if like we work at Walmart. You know what I'm yeah. saying? If everybody, if we're trying to work at Walmart, and then some guy shows up and he's like, well, I I worked at this Walmart for 10 years, and nobody cares. It's like you're <laughs> yeah. treating everybody like shit. We don't want you around here. You know? Right. Yeah. Well, and also, yeah. Another, I w- I say like you know, look at all these comics that uh, like Kevin Hart said, right? And I say I keep saying I repeat this a lot, but he says it took me like 16 years to become an overnight success. Yeah. So right. sometimes you know, not every I say just you know, another thing is like. People ask me, well, why do you do this shit for free, right? Mm. I'm like, well, why do you pay for college? Yeah. Right? You're yeah. paying for college to learn something new, to pick up a skill. Mm. This is the same thing as college. You go into college, you go on stage, you're picking up. Yeah. You know, you're learning from the best. If you get to work with really good comedians, like yeah. guys have been doing this 25 years, you know, guys have been here 20 years, 30 years. They have something to tell you. Got, you know, there's always something to learn from somebody. So when you do it, technically, you're going to school here. Cause yeah. You, you know, every day you're working out. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just not free. You know, nothing's free in life because you got to either give up your time or you got to give up something. But either you're going to pay for school to learn something. Mm. It's for them to tell you to read a fucking book, you can go run out at the library anyways. Mm. Yeah. Or you can go on stage and practice your craft and practice, you know, and learn from other people, network, and meet a bunch of people mm. and learn from them, you know, and build up relationships. 
It's the same thing, you know. It's the same thing as college. You know, nothing is free. It's just that people, I guess, you know, some people are glory chasers or like they're uh, what do they call it, star fuckers. Oh yeah, <laughs> they only right. Well, well the, the the problem now, right. the problem now is that you know we're having this overflow of these like social media comics, mm -hmm. and you know they're trying to make them popular on like TikTok and you know Instagram. Oh, yeah. yeah. But look, I've been I've been in the business twenty five years. So if I if I'm if I'm on TikTok and I see this comedian and they have five million followers, I'm like, how did you get five million followers? Yeah. I've never even heard of you before. Right. <laughs> I never even seen mm. you. And I, and I obsessively watch stand up. Uh -huh. So if something if something's on Netflix or HBO or whatever, or even like you know even even if I'm on YouTube, mm -hmm. I always watch everybody. Right. And I think I think that's the the biggest part that a lot of comedians don't do. Is that well, if a comic ever tells me, "Hey, I don't watch other comedians," I already know that guy's hacky, right? Because uh, if you're not watching other people, really? you yeah. don't know that you're not you're doing other people's jokes, right? No, that it's true because you, you gotta watch you, you watch comedy because this it's true. You gotta watch other comedians because you're like, "Fuck that joke," you know? Yeah, because there's, there's a thing called parallel thinking, right? Yeah, yeah. But you know, you're like, "Well, that guy's been doing that joke for ten years already. Maybe I should change." Yeah. And that sucks. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah. Like, fuck, you know. You're like, well, I better call him and tell him to stop doing that joke because, you know, I'm well, doing as, it as now. Someone but is, you as, can't. Someone that's not a, not a comedian, I, I can relate to that in that I've come across other musicians that would say, I don't listen to other musicians because I don't want to be influenced. It's, no, that's, yeah, that's, it, makes, that's, it makes yeah. – they're, no they're afraid sense. that if they start listening to other, other musicians, somehow their, their own personality will get – like completely erased and they'll immediately start playing like <laughs> right yeah like oh my god it's right. like it's, it's, i don't i wish it was that easy but no it's it's no you got it i mean i mean everybody we're all influenced i think we're all doing comedy we're all whatever yeah. we're doing in life because we got influenced by somebody well, else well, there's yeah. that saying well you know uh um and i'm totally gonna mess it up is uh you know uh a artist uh, you know when when an artist takes from you know uh, uh, borrows plagiarizes from one artist it's it's stealing but when they when they reference multiple artists it's called research you oh know, it's yeah always, so it's, it's you're always as an as an artist you're always influenced of course yeah, by other one. artists yeah yeah and then obviously you don't try to imitate and it's you, the same chords anyway yeah, right i mean you, you try to take that you try to take that into you're a musician. consideration your own material and you're a musician well right? i used to be a musician well i used to play bass but I, like well now i work as a graphic designer so as a graphic designer you're always looking for inspiration from yeah other, you're always looking at other sources, artists right but you're not trying to copy them no but you look a, for influence you look yeah for, like, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Like yeah i'm not like oh i don't look at other artists because i don't want to i don't want to be influenced yeah that's bullshit gonna, yeah yeah, yeah. Well, Guam said something that I found interesting. Um, you said that you see a lot of like TikTok stars or people that do TikToks mm. and they have large followings and they try to do comedy. Yeah. Um, and, and, and some of the people that I've seen, it doesn't translate well. I mean, like, what do you think about people just because they're big on TikTok and well, then they try they to put, do comedy? A lot of them because they put asses in the seats, you know what I mean? They bring people. Yeah. So the clubs are like, yeah, fuck it. They're going to spend money. Yeah, well, I'm going to make money on you. I mean, but I mean, like, but then, then you know, the club's going to provide you a, a, a format, a place to perform. Now, it's on you to come through. So the club, you know, if people keep filling the seats, they're like, fuck it, you know what, he yeah. sucks, but people keep coming and buying the stuff. Yeah. So somebody likes him. But if you, you know, if you got 5 million followers and then, you know, you fill up, a, say, you know, you, you do a show at the com at the store and then uh, it's like everybody's there, it's, the house is packed and you go there and you suck. And then the mm -hmm. second time you're like 50 people will show up. It's like, uh, I, I, think I mean, that's, a, then it's on you. Now it's on you. I, I think there's, a, there's an allusion to the idea of followers or, or likes. Because oh, it's fun. Yeah. It's, it's easy to, to click a button and follow somebody. Right. Or, or like something. But to get them to like physically, actually come, physically to show, come out. To actually yeah, go. Yeah. Or, or buy uh, your, Another your thing, too, is or, algorithms. I think when you post, like, I think 10% of your audience, uh, of your life, actually get to see your stuff. Yeah. yeah. Because the algorithm. So... Like, say sometimes if you post something and you get, like, 40 likes, it, that means that's, like, 10% of what your followers, right? So, they're like, okay, so not everybody saw it. Yeah. Well, you, well, you try to tell yourself that. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not everybody else liked it. I, but, yeah. I will hold up. I, yeah. I, I bring this up to another comedian, and this is, you know, I always look at everything, like, math-wise. Mm -hmm. So, if you think about it like this, like, there's all these TikTok people, right? And they're sitting there, and they're acting like, Oh, I have a million followers. I have two million followers, right? On TikTok, yeah, right? On TikTok, you're, you're, yeah, a, yeah. you're a TikTok comic. Yeah. So there's 360 million people in the United States. Right. Mm. So 
you're you're not even catering to not even one percent. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you're on social media, right? Because yeah. perfect example. Look, if I do the main room, right uh-huh. at the comedy, there's three hundred people there. If there's only three people laughing, I'm bombing. <laughs> do you understand what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, 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 exactly. So, because the re- realistically, yeah. if you look at TikTok, if you're really getting ten percent of an audience, you should have thirty six million followers. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And a lot of people don't look at it like that. Yeah, yeah. And people look at it and they're like. Oh, I can't believe this this comedian. Like, I just saw this guy. There's a guy with some glasses, and he got he got he got he got popular. Uh-huh. He started yelling at some girl. Right, uh-huh. he was getting heckled, uh-huh. and he started yelling at some girl. You know, and that that video went viral. Oh yeah, I think I knew. Um, I think yeah, I knew. but this is the problem. If you watch some of more of his videos, like every third video, people are heckling him, and uh-huh. they're saying shit like, "You're not funny." Dude, I've done seriously over my lifetime. I've done over three thousand shows, yeah. yeah. And I think only maybe ten times somebody yelled out, "You're not funny." <laughs> yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right, right. So you're not a good comic if you keep on getting heckled because right. <laughs> that means you're not keeping their attention. Your your flow of your stand up's not good. Right, right. You know, but this yeah. guy, that's why everybody thinks, oh, he's going to be this next big thing. It's like, oh, he has two million followers, but none of the ki- like if you go to the comedy store. Or even in New York, nobody knows who the f this guy is. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it's funny. It's a, it's a different medium too, because yeah. I think when you're it's when you're like different. on TikTok or whatnot, you're you're trying to entertain somebody in basically the length of a ringtone. Yeah, right? no, and it, as yeah. opposed to like going up onto a no. stage, working out like you know a premise material, uh, you know, trying to make yeah. people laugh. And, no, because you know what? It's actually there's a big difference between having people like you on on, on social media and yeah. actually have them trouble. Make it not actually have them come to your show. Yeah, yeah. like actually going to somebody's show. Mm. That's that takes dedication. Yeah, yeah. they really I mean, have to like. That, you. They really <laughs> have to like you. Yeah, but another thing too. I mean, you're gonna see it because you know if you talk to comics that have been doing it 15, 20 years, it's like okay, you think you're funny. Come here, we're gonna put you in this lineup. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. you know, and people are gonna judge you. Oh yeah, because think about it. You know, they call it like murders row. You know, if you go to any of the big comedy clubs, they have a thing called Murder's Row where it's like, okay, you're on this show, but guess who else is on this show? <laughs> Sebastian's yeah. going up. Bill Burr's going to go up. You know what I'm saying? Right. Bobby Lee's going up. All these guys, and they're yeah. going to go up there, and they're going to murder. And if you don't bring your stand-up to that standard, right. everybody's yeah. going to look at you like, oh, you suck. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's almost, I always, I always basically compare stand-up comedy to basketball. You think you, you, you put out a little video of you dunking, right? Right. <laughs> okay, and you think you can come dunk with these guys. Right. Yeah. But I'm going to put you on the court with LeBron James and Steph Curry and these guys, and this they're going to humble the shit out of you. Oh, yeah. fuck it. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so definitely. basically, that's how it works with, like, stand-up comedy and social media. Yeah. You can hype somebody up all you want, but if they don't bring it, yeah. you know, yeah, let them do their own show when they sell it out by themselves. Yeah. But as soon as you put them in that lineup, it's like, that's the best thing about working at the Hollywood Comedy Store. You have to get better. You have to, right? There's no way in hell you're going to sit in the back of the room every night and watch these guys, and it doesn't force you to write. You know? Oh, you're, you're in the best fucking... Yeah, because yeah. basically, it's like I said with basketball, it's like, you're okay, in the best I, I go to a gym, and I'm watching the all-star NBA guys practice uh-huh. and play. Yeah. I have to get better. You have to. Yeah. I have to figure out what are these guys doing that I'm not doing. Right. And how am I going to bring it? You know what I'm saying? The no. next time I, 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 I come to the stage or the next time I play ball. Definitely. There's this, there's some psychological there. Cause yeah. When you, when you actually attend, like, if that's what you want to do and you attend, like, you, you start to focus. I'm like, wow, I see what they're doing. You're like, yeah, Man, okay. Mm-hmm. And you start to learn things just by mm-hmm. watching. You know, you yeah. Hey, but we one thing we didn't bring up when we first so, started the show is the George Costanza can you guys see that behind what? me? Oh, right behind us? <laughs> Can you guys see? Did you guys notice that fucking poster? No, I, don't, I, know, I noticed it. I noticed it. <laughs> and it's crooked, too. It's like, whose idea was that? Hey, man, Seinfeld's classic. Oh, I love Seinfeld. That's, a, that's yeah. one of the classic shows. But I, I, I wonder who's like, uh, the, you know what? You know what would make this room look better? A half naked <laughs> bald a fat dude. It's hey, for inspiration. Yeah. Hey, hey, and yeah. you know what? They, that was kind of like the joke that he was a fat dude, but he's not, he's really does not that fat, right? When oh, you yeah. look when you look at that picture, he was but just stocky. That yeah. was just the the thing, right on the well, show. He was, yeah, he was short, and stocky. He's, yeah, a, yeah. he's like a midwestern swole. How about that? Just like this. Yeah, he's a hunky. He's a yeah. He wore. <laughs> <laughs> Remember Huskies and from Walmart? He's husky, there we go. Husky. Remember, yeah. no, Kmart used to have Husky yeah. pants. Do you guys ever wear Huskies? Hell yeah, man. Remember those things? Where you couldn't, those things were bulletproof, dude. 
something. I know. <laughs> you they had that big. <laughs> they had that big label in the back. Husky you could do. Pants. You do like stuntman yeah. work with those clothes on. Yeah. <laughs> Fall off a building or a truck and you'd be okay. Yeah, dude. Those things were like kid tough, man. Yeah. They were like anti anti fucking anti kids. Ah, dude, that's funny. Yeah. So back back to you. Uh, so let me ask you something about you, but about you, Guam. When you were living, the difference between San Diego and L.A. Like, how has your life changed? Um. Besides working at the Hollywood Comedy Store, L.A. sucks. L.A. sucks, right? Compared to San Diego. San Diego is the best city to live in. I love San Diego, man. It is. I mean, I always tell everybody, I said, man, if the Hollywood Comedy Store was down in San Diego, I would be in heaven. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I could go. Because another thing, too, I always tell everybody, I I was a big fan of stand-up before I even got into it. Uh Uh-huh. You know, and I think the one thing that triggered it was a long time ago, you know, I would always watch stand-up comedy, you know, on TV and stuff. Yeah, and then yeah. my, when my, the girl that I was seeing at the time, she was like, hey, you should try that. And I was like, man, I can't do that. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, of course, I tried it, and I kept on bomb. You know, the first couple of years, you just suck because <laughs> you really don't know what the hell you're doing. Right. So she would come with me to these open mics, and she goes, no, no, you just got to keep on practicing and practicing. Wow, that's yeah. a fucking awesome woman. So, yeah. Does she have any sisters? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's hard to get a woman like that, dude. Yeah, I got to tell you. Okay, per- perfect example <laughs> why I always tell, like, like me, I had a friend named Matt Augusta, and when we were back then in San Diego and we were doing stand-up, like, our goal was to try to get up, like, three times a night. Yeah. No yeah. matter what. If we have a show... We're going to try to do two mics and this and that. So, and people thought we were crazy. Yeah. And I go, no, dude. And like I said, it's like basketball. If I'm going to go to different places and different parks and recs to play, I'm going to, you know, prepare myself. So when it comes game time, I'll be in shape. You know what I'm saying? Like Kobe and the greats. All the greats, they stayed after, right? And they fucking practice. And then I was watching this interview, man. And this, it's one of the things that I, that, that stuck in the back of my brain forever so Chris Rock's doing an interview, right? And he goes, he goes, I still go to open mics, you know? <laughs> and he goes, I'm Chris Rock. Yeah. He goes, who the F are you not to go to open mics? Because right. there, there's guys here in L.A. They're like, oh, I, I don't mess with open mics no more. Right. I'm like, who the hell are you? Exactly. <laughs> you know, unless you're headlining a bunch of clubs, I get it. Yeah. But, you know, like perfect example, I know guys... I'm friends with guys that feature for some of the biggest comedians out there. Uh-huh. And I'm talking about huge comics. You right. know what I'm saying? And they, they do nothing but arenas. But guess what? On a Sunday, you'll see them at some open mic doing stand-up and comedy in front of eight people. Right. Because right. you have to keep that thing working. No, I'm sorry. You have to you gotta, stay you gotta, fresh. Yeah, you got to keep it working. You got to keep it rolling. Because you, you do get rusty if you don't do it for Oh, yeah. Long. Even it's almost it's almost like but you got to be obsessed with this like seriously for it is you a, it's good. an obsession and, and it is and that's what i'm saying women yeah. like most women do not understand this that's why you know for that with that girl that you are you still with her no no look i i tell her i've been single for 18 years really and the, the main reason is because of this because of comedy right because not Cause every woman i can't another, another thing too it's not fair see another thing too is you might even look at somebody's wife of a very famous comedian right perfect example look at jerry seinfeld right yeah He's married. He has kids. That Jerry's still going to be on the road two hundred days out the year. He don't he do. The guy's not doing it for the money, yeah. right? He already has a billion dollars. Yeah, he's he's a billionaire. He's set pretty much financially. He does it because he still has that itch. Like it'll drive him crazy if he was at the house just going. I didn't get up. You know, I heard that guy writes a joke every day. He hasn't yeah. missed writing. He writes every day. Even if it's bad, he writes every day. Yeah. No, I think it's more than just one joke. I think he said he's just like 40 to 100 a day, right? Oh, I don't know if it's that yeah. much. But he writes every every day he writes. He yeah. Does, he does, it's, it's just a habit that he did. I just read a book. It was called uh, it's called Bad Habits mm-hmm. or what Atomic Habits. Yeah. And it's just developing, like, you know, developing better habits, of, you know, just bettering yourself. More like disciplining yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's where I got the, that's where they're talking about. It's just a discipline. You do something, just a habit you develop. I mean, look, look, perfect example. And, you know, I'm not trying to look, I'm doing all these shows, right? Uh-huh. And it's Sunday and my friends are like, hey, let's go to the beach. And I'm like, no. And they're like, what are you going to do? And I'm like, I'm about to go do these two open mics. Yeah. And they're like, why are you going to do? This? Let's go. Like, seriously, they were mad at me. I had friends visiting. I, them, like, go. I said, no, you guys go to the beach. Yeah. I got to do these two mics because uh-huh. I'm about to do the main room at the comedy store. Right. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And I don't want to feel rusty. Exactly. You know, and um, 
I'll give you guys a perfect example why you always got to prepare it. And somebody told me this. I met this comedian a long time ago. He's like he's like my day one guy, uh, Doc Carter. And when I first started doing stand-up, maybe two years in, he goes, man, if you ever go to a comedy show, always envision yourself being on stage. Because you never know. Right. Right? So perfect example, not even a year later, huh. they used to have these big shows at 4th and B, downtown San Diego. This place holds like 1,500 people. Holy so shit. I went to the show, right? Yeah. I'm literally sitting in the audience, and the guy emceeing runs up to me. He's like, hey, Guam, two of the guys ain't going to make it. Can you go on stage and do 15? Oh, shit. <laughs> so but I go you, up on you stage. You knew the guy, right? You knew him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. But this is the thing, though. I go on stage. I have one of my best sets ever, right? Yeah. You know, in front of a big crowd. Fuck yeah, probably 1,500 big... people? Yeah, but this is the thing, though. Dude, that's That's huge. why I tell everybody, hey, the reason why I had a good set was because I was doing those open mics three nights a week. You, know what you I'm were saying? ready. Yeah, if I didn't have a show, me and Matt and some of my other friends, uh, you know, the guy, like, you got to hang out with people that are kind of, like, well, obsessed they, with it. They're like, like-minded. They, yeah. Yeah, because... If you go on stage and you do a big show and you bomb, that's on you. Right. Now, don't get me wrong. I know sometimes the crowds suck. Yeah. <laughs> there's a there's a funky there's a funky air in the room. They're just not. They're too tight. Right. You know what I'm saying? There's different things that are going on. But you should always have. I always tell comics this. This is one of my best advice I give comedians. You should always have ten minutes of clean material in your back pocket that you could do anywhere. Right. If somebody says, "Hey, man." Can you go up there and, and do make these people at this church laugh? Okay. Right. Can you go to the senior citizen home and make these old people laugh? Yes. Yeah. Can you do this casino? Yes. Just clean 10 minutes. Like, if you've been doing comedy over 10 years and you don't have 10 minutes to clean material, something's wrong with you. Because yeah. that means you missed out on a lot of gigs. <laughs> now, people tell you that. Yeah. Dude, there's, there's a thousand hilarious, dirty, funny comedians out there. Oh, true. But there's only a handful... Of comedians that are clean that are really good, and that's where the money's at. Really, is yeah. clean, clean yeah. comedy. Yeah. Well, when I first, another thing too is that I always, I always had this thing that the reason why I got attracted to the comedy store, especially up here, was when I was working in La Jolla. You know, on my, if I had a weekend off or some, I'd come up here and I started watching everybody. Uh huh. So you know, I went to the Laugh Factory and I was watching these guys and I was like, man, these guys seem like they're all trying to do like their TV sets, mm -hmm. like they're auditioning. Well, I've heard TV. that before. I, yeah. You know, I, I, one of the guys I was uh, working with, we're writing together. He says, always, he goes, write your, write your, write your, write your set. Like yeah. if it's a comedy, like if it's a comedy, uh, what is it, half hour? What do they call yeah, it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like a special. Like a special. Like yeah. A, yeah. Or, or, or if you're going to be on TV. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, well, that's one way to write. I guess, you know, make your life. Yeah. Well, look at, look at Hulu. They hire, they got that one guy. Hey, uh, what's, uh, what, what's up, fool? Mm -hmm. Or. Uh, Chris Estrada. Oh, yeah. This fool. The, the, this yeah, fool. This one, yeah. yeah. The whole show is based around his set. It's yeah. Around, yeah. About him being a bit. Well, you know. have, you, have you watched it? I've seen some of it. Yeah. yeah. First yeah, season yeah. is pretty funny. That, the second yeah. season just came out. Yeah. Yeah. Jamar Neighbors is on that show, too. Yeah. Yeah. He's a, he's a see, regular at the store. Right? Yeah. So this people got to understand, too. You got to remember, like, perfect. I'll give you another example. It doesn't matter what TV show these guys get on. You never know what kind of comedian they are. Right. Right. You know, wrestling Bob Saget. Yeah. He was on the most wholesome family right. show you're going to be on. Dude, the first time I saw him, I was like shocked. I was right. like, this guy's one of the dirtiest fucking comics I've ever seen in my life. Dude, yeah. And then he's doing all this dirty shit here in Hollywood. And then he goes on set and he's like, hey, girl. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I'm, I'm the dad, you know? Yeah. And it was so crazy to watch that shit. You know what? I, that's how I found out. I, I didn't, I, I, found, I first time I heard of him was on TV. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this guy, you know, and then uh, videos. I think he was doing the videos, right? The, yeah. Funniest videos. Yeah, funniest videos, yeah. This guy, he looked like a clean cut dude, and then I hear, no, dude, this dude's a fucking. Oh, dude. This dude's a savage. fucking. Savage. Yeah, he's a savage, he's savage on stage. Bro. But do you guys I was know? like, oh, shit. Do you guys know, like, what kind of opened that door for people to realize? Yeah, like, how did I got what opened that door for uh, Savage? Because he was such a dirty comic. Somebody saw him on stage, a producer did, right? Yeah. And they're like, dude, you come on. I guess he's got that look, too, though. I mean, look, look perfect example with Jamar Neighbors, right? He's yeah. on that show. And he does, you know, he's doing funny stuff. But, dude, when you, if you see Jamar close at the comedy store, you're like, holy shit. Like, Jamar he does, does, a does he the he one does, that does a Trump? Uh, no, he just does a bunch of wild, crazy stuff. Uh -huh. But that's the thing, like I was saying, when I first started coming up here. Yeah. So I go to the Hollywood, you know, I'm a door guy at La Jolla. Yeah. So I go to the Hollywood comedy store. 
And I've seen the door guys perform and some of the, you know, I saw Don Barris and these guys and, and Holtzman and stuff. And I was all like, these guys are out of their fucking minds. Yeah. And I go, dude, this is where I want to be. Right. Because I said, this this place fits my personality. Exactly. You know? Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you after a while, dude, you get tired of like the robot comedy. You know right. what I'm saying? Hey, here's joke number one. Here's joke number two. Yeah. Da, 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 Right. You know? The, I mean, dude, they, they clap down on a lot of stuff like. I'm not even lying, dude. I remember coming up here, you know, back in the day, and dudes were pulling their dicks out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shit. You know, at the very end of the night, just fucking around, you know? Really? You know, but it, it'd only be like, you know, the door guys <laughs> and yeah. I'll doing all kinds of crazy shit. And we'd just sit there be fucking laughing our asses off, you know? But right. they won't do that shit at the improv or the fucking laugh factory. No. They'd be like, man, get this motherfucker the fuck out of here. Yeah, wow. Well, so they, they yeah. pull their dicks out at the store. No, right? that was a long time ago, though, dude. That's a long time ago. <laughs> Seriously. Like, dude, Ari Shafir, every now and then, he uh, would be doing a set that. and yeah. he would just pull one of his balls out and have one of his balls <laughs> hanging out. Dude, and just seeing the shock of the people in the crowd, you know, dude, you just be back there like on the floor dying. Oh my god, you know? dude! I don't know. Yeah, I wonder what. The, I was like, what the fuck am I doing here? Yeah, like, watching this dude's ball hanging. Like, yeah, but it's such a shocking, funny thing. It's almost like when you know when you watch those movies. You know right. what I'm saying? Well, like that's, the, the raunchy kind of humor. That's that, what, you know. Yeah, I think that's what makes the store different. Is yeah. that is that relaxed? Like it's totally like free form. Like um, oh yeah. You can go ahead and just express, you know, it's, you know, free. It's oh, yeah. Freedom of, just express your, work something out, you know. And it's like, there's no, yeah, you're like you said, there's no robotics. There's no, like, you got to be this way. You just go ahead and, and just be yourself and do some crazy shit. Yeah. That you might regret later, but <laughs> you're like, fuck yeah. it. I want to, this is how I feel right now. Yeah, this is exactly. what I want to do. I want to put my balls out. And, and there's there's many different interpreta- interpretations of comedy. And I guess some people think that, that that's part of it, right? Like yeah. just like like being graphic, well, just like, and yeah, like artists that you know uh, paint shit with their paint with their shit, right? There's that one guy that used to drink uh, Gatorade or blue Gatorade, and then he just shit, and that was his art piece, like abstract art. Uh, I'm not familiar <laughs> yeah, with this people, guy. There's people that actually draw with their shit. I, well, I mean, there, there was a there was an artist that would like do an enema with paints. Right, enema. Was, that's uh, the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that we talking? That's the, the one guy? I'm talking about. Yeah, it looked like you know, it looked like slushies from 7-Eleven, dude. <laughs> well, well, another example is that look at people's tasted movies, right? Right. Yeah. A lot of people like watching like R-rated movies. Yeah. They want to see violence. They want to see sex. Yeah. That's how the Hollywood comedy story is. It's like it gets raunchy. Hey, you start hanging out late. You can hear some wild shit. Oh yeah. But some people go to that. They're exactly. like, no. Dude, there's so many people, like, I'll give you a perfect example. One night, I'm working the main room, and a lot of people have never seen Brian Holtzman, right? Yeah. And Brian Holtzman just fucking goes off on everybody. So this big group of Marines came in there. There's, like, fucking 18 of them. And we thought they were going to be a problem, you know, because I know these guys were going to get hammered. Right. Dude, Holtzman goes up there, and he does, like, maybe, like, 45. Dude, all these Marine guys are laughing so fucking hard. They're literally on the ground, like, about to piss on themselves, right? <laughs> And this is the crazy part. The end of the night, they all come up to me and they're like, dude, who the fuck was that guy? And I go, dude, that's Brian Holtzman. He's like a legend here. And they're like, how come we never seen this guy on TV? Or you know what I'm saying? Right, yeah, yeah. And I go, because look at the shit this guy was doing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, right. you talk about yeah. getting canceled. Like, what the fuck? Like, you know? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. We, we have to let, make him go up late. You know what right. I'm saying? <laughs> right. You know? So, but there's certain guys, look, like guys, Marine, you know what I'm saying? Guys yeah. that like to party and like to drink, do drugs. Uh. They love that shit. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Yeah, so you could go see that kind of. Is that, is uh, La Jolla like, is like that? Or? Well, La Jolla basically, they have like showcases on every Thursday, I think, if they're still doing it the way how I remember it. Uh-huh. They do like, a, I believe they do a showcase on Thursday where they have a lot of the local talent there. Yeah. And I tell everybody, hey, listen, if you're doing stand up, if you're, if you've been doing stand up comedy like two years, Dude, move to San Diego. Uh-huh. And they always ask me, I go, listen, because you do open mics up here in L.A., they're just comics. Dude, they have open mics down there in San Diego. There'll be 15, 20 regular people in there. Oh, really? So you, you could actually work on jokes. On, oh, okay. Yeah, dude, there's guys down there right now that they murder. They just don't live here in L.A. Uh-huh. And they, they, they tour, like, all around the country. Right. You know? And and they're, they're really good comics because... It's like perfect example. Like I'll do the open mics here, and I know there's only ten, twelve comics there, but right. I'm still just trying to work on something. Right. When you when you do when you do open mics in San Diego, there's real people there. That's the, that's when you can tell the yeah jokes yeah yeah not. you can tell the jokes because you're gonna get a reaction. Right. Yeah, we, yeah we yeah we we say about because 
when you're doing it for comics, they're like, fucking hurry up. You know, it's my turn. Yeah, yeah. They're just waiting to get up. <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. like, get the fuck hurry, Come on, get the yeah. fuck up. Or I hate that joke because I, you know, sometimes there's like a joke that's similar to them. It's like, fuck, you know, yeah. I did that joke. And it's like, come on. It's more like, come on, hurry up. But, but yeah, you're right. when it's live people, it's a waste. Yeah. That's when you can tell the joke's good or not. Yeah. So right now you just mentioned that that um, that guy he like you couldn't put him on TV right because mm, of both, the yeah. because of the style of comedy that he yeah. does and I guess he's fine with it right mm -hmm. like kind of like where do you see your comedy styling taking you like do you want to like someday be on TV have your special or <laughs> or you or you'd rather be like more on the underground like, well, from that level dude you know what be honest with you my whole thing is that I always tell everybody like stand up comedy to me is like how you guys do stuff with art it's right. an art form to me yeah. yeah. So that's another reason why I never got into acting. Because uh -huh. I didn't want somebody to tell me what the fuck to do. Right. See, mm -hmm. when you're on stage, I'm the actor, I'm the writer, I'm right. the director. You're in control. I control of everything. Yeah. Hey, either these people, like when I hit the stage, dude, it's like either these fucking people are going to laugh or they're not. Mm -hmm. I don't want no 50-50 shit with me. Right. It's either you love me or you fucking hate me. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Anytime you got heckled where you fucking went off on somebody or... Oh, yeah, a lot. Yeah? Yeah, but I told you, though, I, I've only gotten heckled because I was doing, like, it was, I was going up late, and I was doing dark shit. Uh-huh. You know? Yeah, yeah. And you know how that is. It's like, you know, it was, you know, it was like a writing process. It was like, okay, I think this, this joke I have about drunk driving or this abortion joke's really funny. Yeah. Fuck, it's, tw I'm, my, I'm, look, even last night, I'm on stage, it's 12.15 in the morning. <laughs> Of course, I'm going to do something. You know what I'm saying? Right. You I'm going to throw it out there. Yeah. Let me yeah. see if this shit, if it's, somebody's going to bite, if they're going to laugh about this shit. Right. And the comic store is watching each other, too. So we always kind of like, as door guys, we always help each other out. Because I do that a lot. Like, if I see a really good bit that a comic's doing, I go, hey, dude, keep that shit. Right. Yeah. It work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Don't keep on doing that bit. That bit's fucking hilarious. Uh huh. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But everybody bombs. We you know? Know? I've seen, yeah, everybody, yeah. right? Everybody. Yeah. I, I fucking bomb. I mean, think about it. I think in the past eight years, I've probably done almost shit. I've probably done at least seven hundred shows at the comedy store alone. Fuck. Any you know? any any big comics there? Like that? All of them. That bomb there? Yo, no. There's okay. There's okay. Perfect example. Don't say their name. Just no, 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 no. <laughs> there's certain times because think about it. You'll have a very famous comedian, yeah, and they'll come out with a special. Then once the special comes out, they can't do that shit on the road no more. Right. Because the people already watched it on Netflix or HBO. Yeah. So what they do is they'll start popping in in, in the belly room. That's the beautiful thing about the belly room. Hey, it's a small little crowd. There's like 40, 50 people here. Let me, and the, the, a lot of the comics say it. They're like, hey, I want to work on some new shit. You be patient with me. And they just start working on it, you know. Um, perfect example is, um, dude, Fahim Anwar, I'm going to say this. And, dude, that guy's a genius. Like, if you guys get to watch him, that's a guy you need to watch. Because he's always writing and he's coming up with all these original crazy bits, you know. <laughs> but Fahim does a show where he calls it, I'm working on stuff. And basically, he goes up there with a fucking piece of paper and he'll be like, he'll talk about the Seinfeld guy. Yeah. Work on it, work on it, work on it. Next thing you know, fucking two months later, it's a killer bit. And then I'm sitting in the back and I'm going, damn. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. like, Jesus, dude. I saw him develop that whole bit the past two when months. When it first started, right? And now he's fucking crushing it. <laughs> he's fucking killing that bit. Yeah. And that's what people got to do. That's why you always got to write because you never know what's going to fucking be good. Exactly. Always yeah. got to write. Yeah. I think, you, you I think gotta, that's awesome that, so you, that you get to see, like, the beginning process yeah. until until it's finally up there, man. I mean, I mean, think, think about this. Like, imagine being, imagine being me and you're a door guy, right? Then, you know, dude, I'm sitting in the back of, the, uh, we're in the back of the main room, in the green room, right? Yeah. And it's literally like me, Jessica, Dave Chappelle, and his two, his, his manager and his two bodyguards. And Dave is talking to me about stand-up comedy for 45 fucking minutes. <laughs> and I'm sitting there going, holy shit. <laughs> this guy's probably the GOAT. And he's telling me what to do. Yeah. And talking about life in general. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, wow. His whole life is comedy. 
Yeah, dude, he's just cool. brilliant. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's yeah. fucking awesome. Yeah. Well, he's been doing it for years. I yeah. Mean. And, and you got to think about this, about these guys that are, like, famous, like yeah. Bill Burr, Chappelle. Dude, imagine going to any comedy club in the country. And just. And they'd be like, hey, man, can I get, of course you can get a. Yeah, carte blanche. Dude, yeah. Where you go. Dude, I'll kick, I'll kick the guy off stage right now. <laughs> right. He's been up there two minutes, start flashing him. <laughs> Damn, well, I got to get off stage. Hey, bring up Dave Chappelle. You know right. what I'm saying? It's like, oh, shit. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Oh, well, yeah. That would the, does that yeah. bump happen a, a lot more often now or less often since uh, since we they had that situation way back when? Well, I heard Eddie Griffin would fucking go up there and do like four hours. Dude, I don't, you know, that's the whole thing about it. I don't even understand how I couldn't have been a door guy back then. Because even though I know he's famous and shit like that, I'd be like, listen, man. Can, can Eddie go up at the end of the night? Because that wasn't fair to the guys that were, you know, right. in the lineup. And he's doing this a lot. It's not like he was doing this, like, once a week. Uh-huh. He was coming there. Carlos was doing that. Carlos Mencia? Yeah, Carlos mm-hmm. would go to the comedy store, and he'd fucking bump, bump the whole lineup and do three hours. Yeah, he still you know, does it. He's still... And you're just like, what? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So has it changed much since then, since Carlos used to do that, or not so much? No, no. The whole thing about it is that we do a thing called pop-ins. Okay. So we know when somebody, super, like, you know, somebody big is going to pop yeah. in. Okay. So when they show up, we're just like, hey, when you want to go up? Right. Mm-hmm. With something with Dave is that, hey, hopefully Dave goes up later because we know he's going to do, he might do two hours. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's not fair to the other comics that are there. Yeah, yeah. I would never do that. I don't give a, bad, I don't give a damn how big I get. Right. I would never do because I already know guys. That's, that's all they're thinking about the whole day. Oh, I got this 10-minute spot at the store. And then, bam. And then not. you show up and you're like, oh, you, oh, dude, you're not getting up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's understandable, but I, I personally, I wouldn't do that to anybody. That would be kind of yeah. fun, though. You wouldn't? You, I mean, yeah. You wouldn't? Like, no, no. Just to be a I, dick one day? Just no, no, no. Fucking. Dude, if I'm going to pop in, I'd be yeah. like, okay, I'm going to do 15 and I'm out. Okay. You so know you what I'm saying? Do, yeah. You know? I mean, look, look, perfect example. There's times when Bill Burr comes there. And he'll do each room, but he'll only do 15 yeah. or 20. I heard Bill Burr is also, also very cool. He's also very like... Uh, Dude, these guys, see, this is the thing. I, I don't know. I'm never... Why? Okay, I'm going to say this. I don't care if you, even if I get in trouble about this. Think about this. You're a very successful comedian. Yeah. You're making great money doing stand-up comedy. Why would you be an asshole? Right? Yeah. yeah. You finally made it. Uh-huh. Dude, let me tell you something about Sebastian. This is crazy. Sebastian, I, 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 this is long, this is, this is how long ago it was. Remember, I told you, I'm down in La Jolla and I right. used to come up here to LA to watch guys. Yeah. I think Sebastian was probably doing stand up maybe a year or two. Yeah. And dude, he was bombing. Like, I would watch him bomb. Yeah. And there was something about him, though. I go, you know, I would watch him. I go, man, there's something, <laughs> what, there's something about this guy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that if he gets, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Dude, he comes down to La Jolla like three years later, murders, fucking murders. Yeah. And I was, you know, because I'm a door guy in La Jolla, I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? Right. What he did was he found his voice. Yeah. He basically said, Dude, listen, I'm going to be myself. I'm going to write my jokes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. About myself. Comes down there, mur- and I'm like, who was that guy? Right. It was like a total 360 within like three years. Wow. And then one thing after another, one thing. And then th- this was the crazy part, too, was Sebastian got on Comedy Central, right? Yeah. And they gave him the premium blend or whatever three-minute spot. But, dude, that spot made him look bad. Because Sebastian's one of those things, you got to see his full, you his know whole, what I'm saying? Yeah, watch his whole yeah, thing. Yeah, you can't watch three minutes of Sebastian. You right. Need, you, you need to see him tell the whole fucking story. <laughs> Or do his whole bit that takes oh, yeah. 10, 10, 15 minutes long. <laughs> so when I watched it, I was telling all my friends, I go, no, dude, I just saw that guy murder. Yeah. Mm. He's fucking, like, unbelievable. Trust me, dude. And then, of course, it caught on. When people saw him, they're like, oh, my God, dude. I know exactly what you're talking about, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, he's, that guy's fucking hilarious. I saw his yeah. new bit on, because uh, he married a Jewish girl. Yeah. And he's talking about, you know, he's Italian. He goes, eats a Passover. Yeah, and then he's like, "Man, I'm there waiting for the bread, you know." For yeah. <laughs> oh, here's a, here's Dude, a, here's another funny as shit. Hey, here's another good, great Sebastian story. So remember that place I told you about Fourth and B? Uh huh. So Sebastian's already coming up, right? He's on the come up right yeah. now. Sebastian does Fourth and B, right? And you know, and he's <laughs> this shit's hilarious. Yeah. So I'm there at the show, right? I'm watching it. it it's the Vince Vaughn show. So I'm watching the show, and all of a sudden. 
he like looks down and he starts riffing on some guy's flip flops, right? And he's yeah. all like, "What's up with these guys' flip flops and this <laughs> and that?" Dude, half the crowd started booing him. Well, because it's San Diego. Yeah, dude. you're in San Diego. Every other everybody dude in there was wearing flip flops. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everybody's wearing flip flops and sandals, so they started booing him. Dude, if you saw the look of his face after that, he was like, "What the fuck, dude? I just did one riff about sandals and they hated me." Yeah. But he still got them. But you know what? I, I think I was I was I was thinking about that because I, I have a uh, because. I wear flip flops. No yeah, matter, and people talk shit to me. Yeah, but I'm like, you know, I live by the beach. I'm like, that's like the whole pants and flip flops. That's like a New York thing. Yeah, like, it's like they, hey, what's up? You know, they, they're like they're 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 more like uh, pants and shoes. Or yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. this is the beach. It's like so. It's like a big. It's like like little difference. It's like there's we live by the beach. But yeah, that's like a New York thing to make yeah. fun of flip flops yeah. and uh, and even Mexicans too. Mexicans will wear cowboy boots to the beach. Dude. Oh yeah. Or my uncle, we went to the beach one time. My guy was dressed like he was going to. A, Quinceañera. I was like, dude, we're at the beach. Why don't you just wear some flip flops? Relax, oh, sorry. man. Sorry. <laughs> hey, but we're, we're like. But hey, uh, it's, we're, we got a couple minutes left. We got more, 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 more about you. So, San Diego Mexican food versus LA Mexican food. Dude, Any I'm going to say this. I don't give a damn if we have to fight. I will fight you to the death, <laughs> dude. San Diego taco shops are the best taco shops in the oh, whole world. Oh my god! I, okay, no, no, no! I'm, I'm sorry, telling you right bro. now, hey. dude. I've been all, dude. I've been to a hundred different cities in the United States, yeah. and I always tried the Mexican food, dude. Mm. Unless there's some hidden taco shops here in LA that I haven't been to, they're probably in the hood, right? Like I don't want to go to the taco shops where the dudes got tattoos on their faces. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, everybody that goes down to San Diego will tell you that they love the taco shops. Okay, I, I, I think you gotta watch my show, bro. Yeah, tacos <laughs> and workouts on no, YouTube. No, no, but this is another thing too, and I will. But this is the thing, and and I I don't know if you guys are gonna agree with me or not. Well, because Mexico, I mean, San Diego is closer to Mexico, so you got mm -hmm. more of that. Dude, and another thing, too, we're talking about portions. Right. Okay? Uh, Dude, you go to San Diego and you order a burrito, the thing's this fucking big. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's yeah. one burrito. That's what I'm talking like, about. Like, you know, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, dude. So, dude, the first time I came up here and I went to some, you know, little taco shop here in L.A. Yeah. Dude, the burrito was like this small. I yeah. wanted to I wanted to throw it at the lady. <laughs> I go, what the hell is this? You right? gave me a chimichanga. I ordered a burrito. She goes, no, that's the burrito. I said, oh, hell no. No, yeah. no, no. Right. Yeah. So, me top five Mexican, I mean, top five foods. What? For me in general? Yeah, for you. Like, it was Mexican. Okay, Probably. let's see. What's your top Top five? Yeah, top okay, five. Start so, from the five down. Well, let's go. It's easier if I say number one. All right. Of course, Mexican food. Okay. If Mex you grew, if you spend most of your life in San Diego, you're going to love the taco shops and the Mexican, Mexican food. Yeah. I could eat that all day. Fuck yeah. If I was down in San Diego, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be 350 pounds right now. <laughs> Japanese. Japanese. Because I love sushi. I love sushi. Sushi's good. Probably third Italian. I love Italian. I could eat lasagna. I used to work at a. I used to work at an Italian restaurant. Yeah. So, dude, I just eat that shit all day. The meatballs, spaghetti. Oh, dude. But you know, okay. Pizza. Since we're talking about food, we gotta we gotta lay this down right now. Let's do okay, it. let's do it. There's nothing beats home cooked food. Right. It doesn't matter what ethnicity you are. Yeah. yeah. You, I love the taco shops, but yeah. when I go to the fucking Mexican barbecues. Uh -huh. And they're throwing the carne asada on the grill. Oh, not the dude. beats that shit. Right, right. That's you know the what best. I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, that's the that's the best. Uh huh. You know, same thing. And any any like perfect example. Like, I love Italian food, right? But yeah. if I go to my Italian friend's house, uh huh, and the grandma and the aunties are all cooking. Oh, dude. Oh, dude. You're fucking. You're gonna leave in a coma. Total different. Yeah, totally, it's a total difference. Total different. Fucking dude. Yeah. They're cooking from six in the morning to six at night. <laughs> Seriously, and it's just you know what I'm it's, saying. It's a whole thing. It's a whole day thing, right? With yeah. Italians. Yeah, yeah. Well, then, so I'll go Italian. Another thing, too, I'm going to say island food because I'm a Pacific Islander. Okay, Islander food. So. Yeah, but the, the thing about Pacific Islander food is just that, you know, I'm just so used to eating it. I want to try what's, something what's different. The, what's, the, like, the no, like top three Pacific Islander foods? Well, number one, just the barbecue. Okay, barbecue. So the barbecue is basically, you know, you barbecue chicken, the pig, whatever, the pig. you know, and this is the barbecue. And then everybody, all Islanders, we eat rice. I love we rice. We love spam. Yeah. Mm. We'll kill spam. Yeah, we'll eat spam with anything. So then, that's probably four, and then probably five. I'm probably just gonna have to go with something simple, like probably just like Chinese food. Chinese mm. food. Yeah. What about burgers? Dude? Where do you put burgers at? <laughs> well, it's it's so common. Yeah, and you know, people there's so many burgers out there. Oh, I know. You know, and then you got to pick like some like perfect example. Like there's a big war. People want In and Out or they want Whataburger. Uh, and it just yeah. depends on where you were raised. Have you tried Whataburger? Yeah, you still live yeah. in Texas. So what do you think about Whataburger? 
I mean, it's good. Yeah, but but, but this is the thing though. You could tell what a burger between in and in and out's more healthy, right? You know, believe it or not, they're burgers. I used to work there. When I was oh, a really? Kid. Yeah, when I was oh, yeah. a kid. I like yeah. In-N-Out burgers, but their fries are trash. What? In-N-Out fries. Get, get are trash. out of the room In-N-Out right now. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, no you don't like. You don't like burger too. You don't like, burgers okay? Dude, but... you don't like In-N-Out fries? No, nah, dude. I don't like come on. No, no. Well, nah. the, the, you, like I said, it depends on where you grew up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like every state has their bomb whatever right. burger place. Yeah, yeah. You know, like hey, where's the burger? Oh, you know, it's really good too. Is um, I like those mom and pop burger places, like yeah. Steve's or, or uh, now, let me tell you, look, <laughs> Larry's, look, look, Larry's, I, I, Larry's hey, Burgers. I gotta tell a quick story real fast when I first moved to Texas, right? Uh, so I first moved to Texas and I'm talking to this guy in the military, right? He goes, Hey man, listen, they got all these fancy barbecue places here in Texas, you know, this and that, these bars and grills, whatever. He goes, Dude, trust me, he goes, If you're ever driving down a road, he goes. If you see an old black man with a rusted ass barbecue selling plates for like 10, 15 bucks, yeah. he goes, Trust me, try that shit, right? Yeah. So at the time, I'm driving with my wife at the time, right? <laughs> and I go, I go, Babe, I'm gonna try this shit. She goes, You better not eat that. You're gonna get sick. I go, Fuck it, right? So <laughs> I pull over. Old ass black guy. He's probably like 80 years old. Uh, now, you know, he has the shit. That motherfucker pulls out a mop <laughs> and starts throwing that shit over the grill, you know, with oh, the sauce. Yeah, yeah. Dude, that was the best barbecue. To this day, I'm 51. I said, dude, to this day, I haven't tried a better barbecue. Really? And I asked him, I go, I go, dude, how come you don't start a He goes, he goes, dude, I make so much money tax free here on the corner. Yeah. Why, he goes, why uh, would I? Go, why uh, would I? He goes, dude, I'm making two, three hundred dollars a day doing well, this. Yeah, shit. free, right? Yeah, why, free. why would I yeah. fucking spend a bunch of money on a restaurant? Yeah. He's like, dude, I just, I, he goes, I prep all the meat before. Yeah. I come out here, dude. He goes, all my shit's gone in two hours. I bet. Oh, dude, that's the bad bet. It's, yeah. That's so good. Yeah. Well, there's, you know, there's, there's the, a lot of those, uh, like a. Uh, uh, taco stands like on the on the street. Oh yeah, the, oh yeah, on the sidewalk. Yeah, there's like yeah. like I live in San Pedro, and there's they're popping up all the time. There's like there's one that does specifically like churros. Yeah, yeah, and like uh, fried uh, plantains and uh-huh. all that. Oh, hey, don't it's don't get it. Hey, you guys don't get it twisted, dude. All those Mexicans are making money, dog. They're oh, all yeah. making. Money. It's so funny because people try to look down to them and like, oh, you're so poor. You're so... Nah, dude, they're killing it. Oh, yeah. because they're, it's that's it's, all tax free. It's all tax free. <laughs> it's all tax free, and they're not paying rent. Or yeah, nothing. exactly. They're just not... pull that card up, make a quick hundred bucks, and get the fuck out of rent, there. Rent is all through the roof, anyway. Yeah. Rent it's, all, it's it's fucking ridiculous. Right yeah, on the rent. So yeah, they're like, fuck it. You know what? There's always. Hey, that's how we are. It's, it's the nature of the beast. We're like, all right, yeah. you know, we're gonna go. We're gonna gravitate towards what's cheaper. Yeah, you know what? He just when it gets too expensive. He just made a, a valid point. It kind of reminds me of like the 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 people in Las Vegas, where where like you have to tip them, and then and then you're like thinking, oh, he's just the the ballet attendant or the guy that gets your bags. I I, I asked one of the guys, um, you know, oh, you make like two hundred bucks in tips uh a week or something he, week, he got pissed <laughs> and he told me how much he made he made like 80 to to ninety thousand dollars a year yeah and i was like whoa yeah and i was like whoa you know okay like look at the, you know those old new york restaurants those old steak restaurants those steak houses mm. those waiters have been there for uh, 60 years yeah dude those guys are fucking millionaires dude the, they door, so the much- door guys the door guy those doormen uh-huh. that in front of those big buildings Fucking make a killing. They make a killing, dude. That's where they make dude, all the money. Dude, you got everybody, especially the guys that stand in front of the restaurants. Yeah. Or the bars. Dude, there's people going up there handing these guys $50, $100. Right. And that's just one dude. Yeah. Mm. You get three or four of those guys to do that at night. Dude, you're walking away with $600 in tips. In your pockets. Yeah. Dude. yeah. Free, free and clear, dude. And people are making fun of that guy for opening the door. Right, yeah. I'll do that shit all day. You're going to give me $500? Dude, where do I sign I, up? Exactly. I'm, they I'm, even I'm have I'm a union, I'm trying to reassess dude. my life yeah. choices They even right have now. a union, dude. Well, I think about it, but uh, well, now we're going into micro currency. So, like yeah. the digital currency, where they're gonna fucking they're gonna micromanage everything you make, dude. <laughs> I know it sucks. It sucks, right? <laughs> Pretty what soon. Else? What are you talking about? Well, they're gonna get rid of cash. They're gonna eventually. Go yeah, they're they're currency. trying to. I don't think they're. Yeah. I don't think they're gonna be able to though. So now, yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. But you, you know, before and not, right now, everything's like you know, you go to stores now, like we don't they don't take cash. You gotta have to pay with credit card. Hey, but check this out. You know how they say they're trying to do that? It happens, Jay. What are you going to do if there's a power outage? Oh, dude, exactly. There's what hap- what happens not. if... Dude, this happened before, dude. They had a big power grid thing that happened like 10 years ago. Uh-huh. And the whole, like, Southern California and the whole state of Texas had no power for like 18 hours. Right. I think, so I what think, are you supposed yeah. to do? 
I you're can't, fucked. You can't pay shit if your phone don't fucking work. Exactly. I think, I think yeah. it's just cryptocurrency is probably what you're more talking yeah. about. Like where no, it's, well, no. It's like you physically do not have like any kind of currency. It's like well, literally just. No, what do you... Di- cryptocurrency. We you know, digital currency. Yeah, we started that thing too late because we got five minutes. Can no, we I'm go over saying. or... Can we stay for another hour? Yeah, yeah, we'll go. We, you guys mind staying another it's, hour? It's up to you if you guys yeah, want to go. You have time? time? Yeah, you guys are going to take me out to eat after this. Yeah, fuck yeah, we are. We're going to Chipotle. Where are we going? Some, yeah, Chipotle? We're going we we'll get some real Mexican food. Yeah, we're gonna, yeah. yeah whatever. We're, what's good to eat around here in Hollywood, bro? Anything, man. Let's just, we'll go eat somewhere. Yeah. All right. It's fuck like, yeah. Whatever. You know, we know for our fat asses. <laughs> <laughs> they see us walking and they'd be like, oh, these guys hey, listen, listen, You say food around me, you're like, I'm there. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> listen, I didn't, get, I didn't get this way by not eating, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I, I was yeah. telling him that we were making fun of him because he's a new kind of fat. So he has to be heckled yeah, into. Yeah, I just, I've, I've started. I wasn't yeah. this fat before. Because he, he told me, hey, uh, but recently. I'm a, I'm a new fatty. Yeah, he's, a new, he's all like, wait, you're making fun of me, but you're fat. I go, yeah, but I'm the old kind of fat. I've been fat yeah. for like 10 you years. Remember, now. Remember, that, remember that show? Um, Remember that guy rerun on uh, what's happening now? Yeah, mm-hmm. no, no, what, what's happening now was uh, you know where that it was what's uh, happening? Yeah, it's called what's happening. Remember rerun yeah. was chunky. Yeah, he was yeah, a break yeah. dancer. Yeah, and remember uh, what's his name's mom was real fat. The dude with the Roger, 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 yeah, Roger, the dude. His mom was super big, right? But yeah. she would always make fat jokes about rerun. Yeah, I know. And I was always a kid. I was like, wait a minute, just, she's <laughs> fucking fatter than rerun. Like, yeah, like nobody sees that. They're funny jokes, but I'm like, dude, she's huge. Oh, yeah. so, hey, I gotta since you brought up that. Listen, when I I used to live in South Carolina, right? Yeah, man, people don't understand. There's like, I just thought that we do have another booking. Oh, okay, we got so we got four minutes. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, no, we'll wrap it up. All right, let's you wrap it up. You want to do your man. shout outs or whatever about this? The, what do you got to do? <laughs> no, you go ahead and talk. So uh, you're talking about South Carolina. We'll finish your story, then we'll go. Yeah, just what do, I tell everybody: listen, if you're visiting anywhere in the South, you have to go to like one of those soul food places uh-huh. and try it because a lot of people never try soul food. And I'm talking about deep South, like right. if you're like in Atlanta, South Carolina, North Carolina, Florida. That's where the real, try, yeah. That's go go to one of the little mom and pops places. They hey, listen, the if they're food. giving you bread out of the bread bag, uh, dude, that's it's the best so food. Good. Oh my god, <laughs> that's the best barbecue, yeah. dude. Hey, listen, my first my first experience with uh, with barbecue was uh, my friend uh, Lamont's dad mm. took me to a little hole in the wall in Lennox. It was called Hodges Barbecue. Yeah, and right, it was right next to You Buy We Fry. Yeah, it was a little a little place like this big. Old man too, yeah. old old black dude. But, dude, he gave us the bar- best fucking barbecue I oh, ever yeah. had in my life, mm-hmm. dude. All right. That and that was right it. Barbecue. All right, guys. Well, that's it for the show. Thanks for mm-hmm. watching. Um, we'll be doing this next week, so keep an eye out. And then give a big shout-out to Guam Felix yeah. here for being our guest. You got Thank uh, you, man. Thank you. JR, right, little hater, uh, <laughs> Tacos and Workout. Check out his podcast on YouTube. And you got <laughs> Chase Bale here, the graphic artist, uh, co-host, and musician. Sure. What else? Uh, fact checker. He's a no, fact, fact checker. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's my fact checker. Yeah, he's always... I always... I always... Uh, me and him, we fight each other with uh, with TikTok videos. Uh, we, <laughs> we spam, spam each, each other. other with TikTok. And yeah. he's always telling me, no, dude, you're wrong. That's he's, not he's, right. Uh, for now, he's a conservative uncle I've never had. That's right. Well, look, I'm going more towards... Uh, uh, you're giving off that like conservative uncle Facebook energy. It's like sharing just like Sure, if that's, if that's what you want to call people <laughs> with what just, you know... <laughs> Okay, sure. That's what do it, the research, the, bro. Do the research. Okay. All right, guys. Well, that's our time. Thank you so much. Uh, how do you end this shit? I just just say your social medias. <laughs> social media, Fernando's Comedy Hour dot com, and uh, that's it. Yeah. What about yours? I don't have any. Any shows coming up, Guam? Are you going to be on? Yeah. Well, tonight, if I don't know when this is going to come out, but I'm doing the Ha Ha Comedy tonight for their uh, roast battle with digits, okay. and then. I will be doing the potluck on Monday uh, at the Hollywood Comedy Store, and then I'm roast battling Tuesday night, 1030 in the belly room. In the belly battle. room. So remember, this Monday yeah, is coming tonight at the Haha. Ha. Yeah. Roast battles. Tonight yeah. at the Haha, ha. Monday night at the, he's doing potluck, and then Tuesday night, the belly room, uh, roast battle. Roast battle. Who are you battling? Evan Warner. Evan Warner, watch yeah. out, bro. Go, I'm climbing for you, man. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.